In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. I welcome you very much indeed this evening as we enter into the new season of Lent, a time of renewal, a time of transformation, a time of acknowledgement of our brokenness on the one hand and the wonder of God's healing and strengthening on the other. As we gather this evening in the presence of Christ in the Eucharist, we are conscious of how the world is changing around us. We think of the tragic circumstances that are unfolding in Ukraine and indeed so many other frontiers in our world, let alone the difficulties that the world has had with Covid and the pandemic which is ongoing. Perhaps this evening as we do journey that we will keep that prayer for peace, peace for all sides, peace in the hearts of all, that there will be an end to fragmentation and a building of bridges and a language of forgiveness and tolerance and love. We still our hearts and ourselves this evening in the presence of Jesus himself. Let's take a little moment just to shift the clutter, as it were, to the sides of our minds, to create that sense of space for Christ within, so that we might be able to be open, to be honest, so that he can read our whole lives and all our issues. As we do gather ourselves in God's presence, in the presence of his Son, I'd like just to sing a little piece of music that sets us in the scene of Lent as we journey in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. It's a piece called Turn to Me, O Turn and Be Saved. Turn to me, O turn and be saved, says the Lord, for I am God. There is no other man beside me. I call your name. Listen to me, my people. Give ear to me, my nation. And love will go forth from me. And my justice for a light to the people. Turn to me, O turn and be saved, says the Lord, for I am God. There is no other man beside me. I call your As we still our hearts this evening, 
we bring all those that are very much caught up in our lives, family, friends, our communities, our parishes, and indeed the wider world, which needs healing on so many different levels. Let's call to mind all those people and contexts so that we can offer them wholly and completely to Christ, asking for that deep-seated healing and renewal. I would like to take you on a journey this evening, a journey which deals with the Apostle Peter. And Peter is growing into the call that Christ is calling him to, that vocation to be a follower, to be an apostle. He struggles with that sense of call to be honest. He's so conscious of his brokenness and sinfulness and yet isn't it wonderful that Christ chooses this individual and gathers a rather motley crew to lead the church? But it is Peter who will have the responsibility of keeping that unity and love So I'm taking you out onto the Sea of Galilee, or Tiberias, as it would be known as well. Let me just read from the Gospel of St. Matthew, a little passage which depicts the scene, the drama, the adventure that Peter would experience. Directly after this, that is, the miracle of the loaves, he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, while he would send the crowds away. After sending the crowds away, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, while the boat, by now far out on the lake, was battling with a heavy sea for there was a headwind. In the fourth watch of the night, he went towards them walking on the lake. And when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But at once Jesus called out to them, saying, Courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. It was Peter who answered, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come to you across the water. Come, said Jesus. Then Peter got out of the boat and started walking towards Jesus across the water. But as soon as he felt the force of the wind, he took fright and began to sink. Lord, save me, he cried. Jesus put out his hand at once and held him. Man of little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And as they got into the boat, the wind dropped. The men in the boat bowed down before him and said, Truly, you are the Son of God. I deliberately choose this reading because 
Peter. Peter begins to stretch himself and is stretched by Jesus in terms of his whole life. The sense of fear among some of the apostles who were experienced fishermen is quite tangible. There is no escape on the boat. Their fear increases as the storm equally gets worse. But it's Jesus' words in the midst of the storm, perhaps difficult to hear, that come as a dawning comfort for the apostles. And their fears begin to subside. But Peter takes this a little further and invites Jesus, asks him to tell him to come across the water, to walk on the water. Peter, Peter becomes only too well aware of the moment of intense joy and surprise and shock at his ability on the one hand, and yet becomes only too well aware of his brokenness. I often think of the image of Peter putting his hand in the hand of Christ, as the swell of the sea covers both. And yet Christ pulls him out of the water and to safety, to safe harbour in the boat. Jesus joins the disciples. He's with them. He's shaping them, moulding them into the team that he wanted them to be. These moments of pruning, the moments of new life that the apostles see, also give them a wonderful insight into who Jesus really is as the Son of God. The Son of God on a mission. Isn't it true that we can be buffeted in our own individual lives or family life or indeed the life of community and the world in which we live today buffeted intensely sometimes the waves of intolerance the waves of pain and suffering experienced on so many different levels can be overwhelming and swamp the boat there is fear. Sometimes it's very palpable. And yet, are we not called to hear the voice, that healing voice of Christ? Courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. The boat is used as a description for the church journeying through this world to eternity. It is, as it were, that we have one foot in this world and one in the next. Isn't life full of mystery and yet intense love and hope in Christ? The lockdowns were very difficult for us all. And I remember Pope Francis standing in front of the cross in Peter's, just outside the Basilica. A beautiful cross which had been the source of inspiration for people during a terrible plague in the city in past centuries. And I noticed just the stillness in the atmosphere while there was a sense of lockdown, there was nevertheless a sense of connection. The theme of the boat is taken up by Pope Francis in his reflections during that period of time. The boat of the church being certainly under pressure from the waves of the world 
of all those emotions and experiences in people's lives that we all know only too well that have affected all of us in this time. The question that Pope Francis takes is from Jesus' question to Peter. Why did you doubt? Man of little faith. And yet Peter's putting his hand or hands in the hands of Christ is in itself a statement of belief and trust in Christ who shapes and moulds Peter into the person that he would become. Pope Francis offers these thoughts. Faith begins when we realise that we are in need of salvation. We are not self-sufficient. By ourselves we founder. We need the Lord, like ancient navigators needed the stars. Let us then invite Jesus into the boat, the boats of our own lives. Let us hand over our fears to him so that he can conquer them. Like the disciples, we will experience that with him on board, there will be no shipwreck. Because this is God's strength, turning to the good, everything that happens to us, even the bad things. He brings serenity into our storms, because with God, life never dies. I find these reflections reassuring. Reassuring in a world that seems to be rapidly changing. The recent events on the international stage have taken us by storm. We are called to be makers of peace makers of hope. Bridge builders, sowers of the seeds of love and reconciliation. Courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Let's take a little moment as we reflect on how we can be very much like Peter and how we are only too well aware of the ripple effect of what's happening in our world. Let us hold to our hearts all the sick this evening, all those who suffer from physical illness or mental illness or indeed addictions of any kind. We pray for them very much in that pain and suffering and yet I marvel at how the sick are healers in their own right. Let's just take stock a little moment as we remember our sick. Sickness can be experienced in so many different ways. Loneliness can be a form of where someone just does not feel well within themselves, that sense of isolation, grief, a sense of bereavement can also be a struggle, a storm in itself. The pain and suffering in the context of conflict which is only too real for us in these days and in other parts of the world. Everyone suffers in these contexts. And yet 
are there not miracles of love, of support, of care, of healing? Courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and they will understand. You shall see the face of God and not afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow me, and I will give you Let us remember some of our requests in regard to the sick. We pray for all the sick across the world in whatever circumstance. We pray for those who suffer from mental illness of any kind. We remember those who suffer from addictions. Again, that they may be freed from that sense of imprisonment and experience new life and hope through the help of others who do fantastic work. We remember our homeland, our planet Earth, that we may treat our homeland like a sister and a brother. We pray for peace. Peace in what is unfolding in Ukraine. We pray for peace on all sides, an end to violence. We pray for refugees, the greatest number of refugees in Europe since the Second World War. We pray for them all. We remember our frontline workers, all those who work in hospitals, care homes, all medical facilities, all those who help in any way in the community. We pray for all. Our prayers are asked for Sebastian's mother to receive healing from her tiredness. We pray too for Regina's speedy recovery from the after effects of surgery. May you heal well and indeed all those who have had surgery or indeed those who are receiving treatment. We pray for the complete healing of Conrad from cancer and for his family members to be strengthened in Christ. May they too be a source of healing and great love. We pray for Finn to receive healing from sleeping problems and for Matthew to be freed from autism. We pray also for Andres to receive healing from a severe skin allergy. There are many in our hearts and minds 
that we present to you, Lord Jesus, this night. And we ask you to reach out your arms as you did to Peter, that you may fill them with hope and reassurance, bring them to safety through your healing. We pray that they and all of us will abandon our lives into your hands so that we might be all the more free. We also ask the intercession of Mary, our mother. Mary, who held her son at the foot of the cross and was aware and a witness to many of the miracles he worked to heal him. May Mary lead us close to Christ, her son. Can we, can we be healers ourselves? Lord, fill us with that ability in your name to bring hope. In Ireland, we have many beautiful prayers about healing. We're coming to the Feast of St. Patrick very soon. We spent many days and nights on Slemish when he was kidnapped and brought to this island. Slemish happens to be in the diocese where I am a priest. It is in County Antrim. We know the wonderful breastplate of Patrick and he brought healing and he brought a faith that enabled ancient prayers to be written. Here is one for healing. Thou, my soul's healer, keep me at even, keep me at morning, keep me at noon on rough course faring. Help and safeguard my means this night. I am tired, astray and stumbling. Shield thou me from snare and sin. Lord, we commend our lives into your care, and particularly that we ask you to be with those who are sick in any way. Grant them your healing. Thank you for the love of family and friends, frontline workers, community. May you work through them. May they be your hands, your feet, your eyes. And may they experience that deep-seated healing on so many different levels. Courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. We journey with one another in these days, let us keep that prayerfulness for each other. Thank you for joining me this evening. But we leave now all our concerns, all our worries, the storms of life. We leave them in Jesus' hands, knowing that he listens to us because we have the gift of the Spirit given to us. It helps us to pray and to remember what Jesus has said and done. We present them all our petitions for the sick and other aspects in the hands of Jesus who brings them to our loving Father. Let us be united in prayer and to hold on to that consoling phrase of Christ. In the midst of the storms, courage, it is I, do not be afraid. The Lord bless us, keep us from all evil and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Journey's ended, journey's begun.